Hey everyone, it's Ryan here. Uh, so this is my NXT TakeOver 36 uh, sort of reaction slash recap. Um, I don't know why we call them recaps rather than reactions because I think when you put reactions people expect you to be watching it and like literally reacting to it rather than reacting to the show itself. Um, but anyway, uh, so there were five matches. Uh, this took place on Sunday night. Uh, so this is kind of just over a day afterwards. Uh, I would have done it... Um, Originally, when I did the summer, not the summer summer recap, the uh, what did I do? I did a couple of other videos. I forgot what it was, but I was going to do it with it. Um, and then I think just to that point, I could just feel my eyes getting tired during the previous videos. So that's why I didn't do it. And then um, yeah, I feel like now is probably like a good time to do the. Video. I think as well. Uh, so I oh know. So it was. I was, uh, I'm trying to think now, my brain's gone dumb. Because basically, it happened on Sunday night, and then watched the video, and then I was going to do a recap for some, I think I was like uploading some videos, and then I did a video about something else, and then I was going to do it, and then I didn't. And then Monday I was waiting all day to see about extra work, and then that didn't happen. Um, anyway, I'm rambling on about uses. I'm doing the video now. Uh, on a Tuesday, which is fine. Uh, so, um, start off with, we have, uh, oh god, I deleted the reaction video. Let me just look it up. I'm doing very well, as you can tell. I'm not an afternoon person, not a morning person, not an afternoon person. Right, so, yeah, there were uh, five matches from NXT TakeOver 36. So, uh, the nice thing as well about NXT compared to, oh, I'll tell you what it was. It was because SummerSlam was really long. Um, it just really put me off, uh, like it really worn me out. Uh, so, uh, we start with a pre-show match, kind of just announced on the night. Ridge Holland defeats Trey Baxter in less than two minutes. It's pretty much just something to do on the pre-show, and basically Ridge Holland calls out Timothy Thatcher for a match, so we'll probably get that down the line. Uh, first match, Cameron Grimes with Ted DiBiase versus LA Knight for the Million Dollar Championship. If Grimes loses, then Ted DiBiase would have... Uh, would have to become LA Knight's butler. Uh, this one is very good, um, very solid match between them. Um, you know, it's like a lot of back and forth. Cameron Grimes starts trying to do Ted DiBiase's uh, million dollar dream. Uh, LA Knight has his own submissions, it's like very back and forth. At one point, LA Knight grabs a million dollar title, he's going to go smack um, Grimes with it. Um, but then the referee stops him, and in that time, Ted Biasi, uh grabs the belt, punch, he punches LA Knight, grabs the belt. But there's a really confusing moment, because basically the referee has the belt, Ted DiBiase grabs it off her, and then she goes, What are you doing? Why have you got the belt? It's like, you literally just gave him the belt. Um, but I like I get why, because it cut, he kind of needed it for the next spot, where it's like, he grabs the belt, she's like going, Why are you doing that? Blah, blah, blah. And then... Uh, he basically throws it back in the ring to uh, Cameron Grimes, and then she goes to him saying, why you got the belt counter, blah, and all this stuff. And whilst that's happening, Ted DiBiase puts the million dollar dream on uh, LA Knight, throws him back in the ring. Uh, Cameron Grimes hits the cave-in, which is the foot stomp, similar to the one that Kofi does off the corner sometimes. Um, and then he wins. So Cameron Grimes is the new million dollar champion. Straight away, uh, feel good moment. Um, yeah, this was a really good match, a really fun match between them, great way to open it. Um, and then next we've got Raquel Gonzalez versus Dakota Kai for the NXT Women's Championship. The story to this one is Dakota Kai uh, turned her back on Raquel Gonzalez, uh, doing the whole, I plucked you from obscurity, you'd be nothing without me, cliche heel thing, which in a way sort of makes sense, you know, Dakota Kai did bring Raquel Gonzalez into NXT, um, had her as like a bodyguard, then Raquel... Like, it's sort of similar to Batista, where it's like he was brought in through someone that's been there longer, and then they sort of outgrew the uh, person they were being a bodyguard for. Um, you know, it came down to Io Shirai challenging Raquel Gonzalez, not Dakota Kai, to a championship match, which is odd because it's sort of like, like I get the fighting champion uh, basically just picking a contender for herself. Um, so basically, that's the story they played into. It's sort of like Dakota Kai saying. Essentially, like, Dakota Kai's jazz that Raquel got the title shot and not her. And the fact that Raquel actually won. 
so yeah, they have this match. Uh, Dakota Kai goes after Raquel's arm because she's trying to set up like her armbar submission, all this stuff. Uh, she hits a finisher at one point, and then Raquel does kick out. Uh, I think Raquel gets her power bomb off, but Dakota kicks out of that. Eventually, it comes down to a top rope version of her finisher for Raquel to win. A uh, very solid match. Um, as like she's celebrating, me and my friends are sort of thinking, well, who's next for Raquel? Because they've not really built anyone up. Uh, like Unfortunately, at the moment, uh, the tag division and the women's division in NXT is starting to flounder. It doesn't help that the main roster keeps calling up a bunch of their talent and then just doesn't replace it. Um, and then Kaylee Ray from NXT UK, uh, former NXT UK Women's Champion, she appears. So I guess she's next in line for the title uh, in maybe a couple of months' time, who knows. And then next we have, for me, the match of the night, match of the weekend. Could possibly even be match of the year, um, considering that last year pretty much it was the match of the year as well. We get the rematch between Walter and Ilya Dragunov. Um, so Ilya Dragunov, after the last defeat, has been rebuilding himself and trying to find that inner thing within him that's capable of beating Walter. He feels like he's found it. Walter has basically found every way to make Walter. He makes him lose to Pete Dunne through like some form of distraction. Uh, he beats him down at one point, uh, trying to basically tell him that he's not worthy of beating Walter. Uh, they then have this match. Uh, Walter at this point has been champion for 870 days. So that's essentially uh, two and a third years, which is very impressive. I know like he didn't defend it as often, but uh, you know, Brock Lesnar didn't defend it that often. He only went like a year and a bit. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of solid strikes again. Uh, you know, some of the chops that pretty much echoes throughout the, uh, the building. You got really hard kicks. Uh, Dragunov does get like a couple of submissions on, Walter breaks out of them. There's a bit, like, it's a bit sloppy, but I don't mind it too much because it could have ended worse. There's a bit where um, Dragunov's got a sleeper on Walter, Walter gets up, climbs on the ropes, and he's going to do like a back body drop from the top rope. The only thing that I worry about that is because like, at least when they're standing, it's not too bad a bump because it's only a little bit down. So basically, he jumps backwards, but they sort of like separate a bit early and they land a bit awkwardly, but it's fine. I think basically what they're trying to do was like, it land in a way where he could just get the sleeper back on, because then he gets back up to his regular back body drop. Well, uh, Dragunov then rolls through and keeps the sleeper on. Eventually, at one point, Walter gets the rope. Uh, Dragunov then uh, like uppercuts him in the back of the head. Uh, kicks him in the back of the head, um, puts on like this giant sleeper, and like to the point where he chokes him that much and lifts him off the floor. And Walter taps immediately. Um, you know, like I thought he would have won by a pinfall, like his giant uppercut to the back of the head. He made Walter tap out, which is very impressive. Um, also, Walter kicks out, I think, two separate power bombs and a uh, top rope splash by Walter. Um, I think there's one bit as well where he basically gets like slapped on the back and Dragunov immediately powers up. You just see the rage within him. He just continues to beat the hell out of Walter. But yeah, Ilya Dragunov is your new NXT UK champion. And if anyone wants to beat Walter, it was Dragunov. It was an amazing story, an amazing, brutal and hard-hitting match. Um, yeah, like, like I said before in the uh, predictions video, like it was pretty much given five stars last time. This one pretty much goes above that. Uh, it was absolutely incredible to watch and uh, I was very excited for it and it definitely lived up to the hype. And then we've got uh, Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole in a two out of three fours match. So it starts off like a regular match. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly wins with a bit of a roll up. Uh, so basically Adam Cole goes to Panama Sunrise, um, which essentially is a, he jumps off the middle rope and does a Canadian Destroyer essentially which is, you know, flip power driver. Kyle O'Reilly reverses it, sits down for the pin, gets him that way, so it's a bit of a shock victory. And then it goes on to a street fight. Uh, they're very brutal towards each other at one point. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly sits Adam, da Adam Cole down on a chair, puts the uh, bin on his head, and then does a running, jumping knee from the apron straight through him. Uh, there's one point as well where Cole goes out to the ring, he grabs a chain, wraps it around his uh, fist, 
and as he's getting up he sees Kyle O'Reilly on the other side and he also gets it as well they're punching each other with the chain fists eventually they lose the chains um, eventually uh, Adam Cole hits Kyle O'Reilly really hard in the ribs his rib starts to hurt and that's sort of been the thing throughout the match is Kyle O'Reilly's ribs um, and then eventually he does hit a um, last shot uh, and then Adam Cole wins, so then it's one all. Uh, whilst the cage is being lowered, they're checking out on O'Reilly because he's like severely injured with the ribs and everything else. As that's happening, Cole continues to attack him. He attacks him on the outside, throws him through the table, puts him back in the ring. They start the match. Uh, it's mostly Adam Cole here. Kyle O'Reilly gets a couple of hope spots in, but Cole just continues to dominate. He gets handcuffs out. He handcuffs O'Reilly to the uh, apron. Um, you know, against the steel cage, starts super kicking him a couple of times. Then the third time he goes through it, Kyle O'Reilly grabs his foot, throws him down on the floor, puts him in the heel hook, and he's basically using his hand in the rope as like some leverage, I guess, whilst he's still applying the heel hook. And Adam Cole taps out. Um, for me, it was like it was a really good hard hitting match, very brutal. Like some moments, it did make you wince a bit, but I think the end was just a bit flat. Like the fact that he's being brutalized, they've done the whole, he's been beaten up before the third fall, he's now handcuffed to the ropes, and then within a minute, he's won the match after taking two super kicks. He then just grabs his foot, puts the submission on, Cole taps out within like 15 seconds. And yeah, it's really weird, like uh, there's a bunch of like BS chants, a lot of boos, people throw Cole over O'Reilly. Um... I think they, like it should have gone on for another five minutes. He should have eventually broke out the cuffs or something at least. Or at least uh, handcuff Cole to the ropes maybe. I don't know if they do a rope break in a steel cage. But uh, yeah, it kind of felt a bit odd. like Especially considering that Kyle O'Reilly didn't attack his legs at any point prior to the match. Like I'd get it if he like hit a few chop blocks or like smacked him in the leg with a chair or the chain or something. But there was like no attack on the leg or the ankle prior to the submission. Uh, but yeah, so Kyle O'Reilly wins. Uh, this could possibly be Adam Cole's send off either to the main roster or somewhere outside WWE. I don't think he's signed a new contract yet. I probably don't think he wants to, considering NXT is now changing and we've seen what happens to people on the main roster. I mean, Karrion Cross is a story in itself, uh, which I'll get to after the next match. Um, yeah, Kyle O'Reilly wins. Uh, you know, it's a good way to end the saga. If Adam Cole goes off, it's a nice last little match for him. And finally, the main event, Samoa Joe versus Karrion Cross for the NXT Championship. Karrion Cross with a very basic entrance, like usual, just by himself. Uh, chance of We Want Scarlet, chance of Hardy, kind of shows what happens. Basically how they've sort of ruined his character already, and it's elevated on the main roster. Um, very back and forth with this one, both of them trying to get their sleeper holds on. Uh, eventually, Samoa Joe wins with the Muscle Buster, which he hasn't done in several years since accidentally injuring Tyson Kidd and pretty much ending his career. Uh, and Samoa Joe beats Karrion Cross, and he is your new NXT champion. Uh, you know, very uh, feel-good moment. Uh, you know, nice little pyro when he's celebrating on the ramp. And very intrigued to see who challenges Samoa Joe next. Um, yeah, as for Karrion Cross, I think we saw this coming considering he's on the main roster and this whole thing with Hardy that's been going on. And now to top it off, last night he's now wearing this red metal like demolition slash shredder looking outfit. He looks really stupid. It's like when Lord Tensai came back, except they've sort of just like elevated it a bit to make it look a bit weird. I get what they're trying to go for. It just does not work for Karrion Cross, And yeah, um, I think Karrion Cross is going to be a very, very big victim of the main roster. And, you know, if something comes out of it in a year's time, then fair play to Karrion Cross for going through all of that rubbish. But it's, it's WWE in a nutshell, where they want to base... It's, it's such a weird thing. They will make it their own character, make it really bad... And then when they get out of that and become their own thing, WWE will claim it as uh, it's their own character. They've made this new, you know, they've made this character that's become this thing. 
when it's basically just them going back to how they were before they've just escaped the crappy WWE character. For example, Drew McIntyre, you know, he was the chosen one, didn't go so well, they then put him in three-man band where he's being this silly musician thing. He then leaves, becomes Drew Galloway, then comes back as Drew McIntyre again, but obviously with everything as Drew Galloway from the indie scene. And then they try and claim that it's the Drew McIntyre of old. He's, you know, if it wasn't for his time in WWE, he couldn't have spent that time away developing himself and blah, blah, blah. You know, he's still WWE's Drew McIntyre, despite the fact it's Drew Galloway from the indies. Um, yeah, it's this weird narrative that WWE have. But, uh, having said that, I've got every prediction right. I managed to perfect the night. I did predict uh, Cameron Grimes, Raquel Gonzalez, Dragunov, uh, Kyle O'Reilly, and Samoa Joe. Uh, so I am, yeah, currently the predictions champion. I was tied with uh, three other people after SummerSlam. And then I was the only one to get all of them right here, so I'm currently the predictions champion, which is nice. Um, but yeah, that was NXT TakeOver. Uh, every match was pretty much very solid, very well done. Um, like, they weren't bad at all. Um, you know, like, and the, the nice thing about this compared to SummerSlam is every match on the show had a purpose for being on the pay per view. Cameron Grimes and LA Knight, the story of Cameron Grimes is sick of being LA Knight's butler and uh, he really wants a million dollar championship, so that makes sense. Dakota Kai betraying Raquel Gonzalez, and that's why they're having this title match at the pay-per-view. Dragunov and Walter, it's the long-term story of Dragunov needs to beat Walter, essentially. He needs to prove that he can beat Walter. Uh, Kyle Riley and Adam Cole, their whole, uh, you know, the breaking up of the Undisputed Era, the intensity of that rivalry, it comes to a conclusion at this takeover. And then Samojo and Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross provoking Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe then becoming back on the active roster and wanting to take Cross down once and for all and restore order to NXT. So like I said, they all make sense for being on the pay-per-view. You know, all of them are title matches apart from, uh, you know, the Kyle Riley Adam Cole. But again, that rivalry is so intense it needs to be on the pay-per-view rather than uh, regular NXT. Um, whereas, you know, with SummerSlam we had Alexa Bliss, Eva Marie. We had Drew and Jinder. Um, you know, we don't need those matches on pay-per-view. Um, yeah, like I said, NXT TakeOver 36 was a very good show. I had a lot of fun watching it. Uh, do you know what was nice as well? Two and a half hours. It wasn't four. I wasn't up till quarter past five in the morning. The pre-show was at half midnight, finished at one, and the main show finished at half three. It was very nice. Um, I'd say main roster, main notes, but they won't. They'll keep it four hours. Um, but yeah, that's been my uh, reaction slash recap of NXT TakeOver 86. Uh, let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching this, and I will see you in the next one.